Hello, CBJ fans. Blue Jackets insider Jeff Svoboda here with a new feature we'll be doing throughout the team's 20th anniversary celebration. Welcome to Where Are They Now? presented by Huntington Bank, a series where I'll be chatting with a number of CBJ favorites from the first two decades of Blue Jackets hockey. And as you can see, we're going to start here today with the legend himself, the first head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets, Dave King. And Dave, uh, thanks for doing this. And how are you today? I'm doing great here in Phoenix, Arizona with my wife, Linda. So uh, yeah, things are great. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. That was going to be my first question. Uh, where are you now? Because you coach so many different places around the world, uh, not just in, you know, in North America and in the NHL, but so many places uh, overseas and international tournaments and things like that. Uh, you've ended up in Phoenix, but obviously you want to talk about your time here in Columbus and uh, just kind of wanted to start. Uh, so many of the people I've talked with that were part of that inaugural team uh, from players and staffers have, in many cases, you know, very fond memories of their time here when this organization kind of started. It was October of 20, uh, year 2000, actually, uh, yep. when the Blue Jackets took to the ice. Uh, so much excitement, obviously, bringing a new franchise to a new market. And there also seemed to be a lot of camaraderie on that team as well. What kind of stands out for you as you look back at 20 years and, and uh, what kind of uh, the experience you had while you were here in Columbus? Well, it was a wonderful experience. I uh, had a chance to work to be the first coach of the Blue Jackets and uh, our owner was Mr. McConnell, who was a fine gentleman and uh, you just couldn't get a better owner for a franchise that was just starting out. Uh, and our reception by the fans in Columbus was really wonderful. We had lots of sellouts, so we had great support. Our team was uh, an expansion team at that time, Jeff. And, you know, the expansion rules now are much more generous than they were at that time. Now you can get uh, through the, uh, you'll see with Seattle coming up, uh, you can be almost instantly competitive and make the playoffs like Vegas did uh, in your first year. In our era, uh, it was much more difficult. The expansion rules were restrictive, but we, we had a great group of guys. You know, the old expression, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's exactly what evolved over the course of the season with the Blue Jackets. We had a, a great group of guys with lots to prove. They got their first big opportunity in the NHL, a lot of them and uh, they made the best of it. Yeah, and you mentioned there, you know, guys with a lot to prove and kind of bringing in a new franchise, and there were so many firsts along the way. Was it exciting for you to be a part of that? Just, you know, first win, first things like that. Obviously, a first professional franchise here in Columbus. So many things that were new and exciting for the Columbus fan base. Was it neat to be kind of uh, experience that as you uh, were here at the beginning? Yeah, it was so exciting, Jeff, because, uh, again, we had great fans. I can remember the first game, the opening face-off. It was uh, truly, truly exciting. I can remember the last game of the first year where we beat the Chicago Blackhawks in overtime to uh, give the fans a, a good entree to the next season. So, yeah, it was a wonderful franchise. And I think, um, you know, being new to the NHL, uh, our staff was, uh, was really highly uh, organized. It worked very hard. Um, and it was just right away you could tell, Jeff, it was going to be a terrific franchise. It was uh, first class all the way. Uh, the building was amazing, and uh, what a great city to live in. Columbus is a great place. My wife, Linda, and I really enjoyed our stay there, and uh, so it was really a good situation and a great addition to the NHL. Yeah, is it hard to believe it's been 20 years as you look back? Obviously, now this franchise is, you know, really on a solid footing. They've had some playoff success these last couple of seasons. Uh, you were there at the beginning, so as it kind of is you're wrapping your mind around it, it's almost kind of crazy for me at least to look back and think that it has been 20 years since uh, this whole thing started. Time flies, you know, and that is an expression that is so appropriate. Like it is 20 years and uh, I can still remember so many details of Columbus with the Blue Jackets and uh, having so much fun with our, our staff there. And uh, so really it, uh, time does go by quickly and we followed the, the franchise very carefully. I've been very proud to see the team make the playoffs and do so well. And, uh, you know, they've really got now a real strong, stable franchise in terms of being competitive and I think John Tortorella and the staff just do a great job. Yeah, and, and you had kind of mentioned this uh, earlier, but you come in coaching an expansion team, and you're right, things were different uh, 20 years ago when it came to setting up rosters and things like that. Expansion teams were not really expected to win uh, when the Blue Jackets came in. Uh, do you remember just kind of what it was like when you were approached by the team? Uh, you had to know coming in there was going to be certainly the excitement of all those firsts, but there was also probably going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be some bumps in the road as well as far as uh, winning games. Uh, was that a challenge that you kind of embraced when you came in? And was that something that when they approached you, you found uh, exciting? Yeah, we were all very aware when we came into Columbus with an expansion franchise. Look, because you could look back and see other expansion teams like Nashville and uh, teams like that, that uh, Anaheim that had all come into the league and the difficulty and challenge they had. So you knew right away um, 
it was going to be a challenge. You know, our talent level on our team was, was still pretty good. Like we had people like, you know, Jeff Sanderson, Espen Knutson, David Baborny, Stevie Hines, uh, guys like that, that were pretty good offensive players and, and really did a great job for us. But it was the character of our players that were going to make the difference. And so the old lines, the Deneens, uh, guys like that gave a strong leadership and, uh, but it was, it was a, still a battle. A whole year was a battle. And uh, we knew from the start to the finish that uh, everybody wanted points against the Blue Jackets. Every team yeah. we played, established team, knew these were must points. And they weren't going to take us lightly because these were points they needed to get. And so, uh, you know, it was, cha- it was a challenge. The start of the year was, was really bumpy the first month. It uh, looked like it might be really painful. <laughs> but we got, to, we got it together, you know, and... Uh, the interesting thing for me was the last uh, 20 games is kind of a real good way to measure your team. And in the last 20 games, we were nine wins, nine losses, and two ties. So, so we were a little bit slightly above 500. And you knew we had turned the corner, and we were now going to be a pretty legitimately a pretty decent team. Yeah, and it's actually interesting. I was just talking to Ron Tugnut about that uh, not too long ago, and he meant, remembered that as well as how strong that team finished and how – you know, guys really bought into what you were trying to do as far as, you know, the way they had to play with character and they had to block shots and they had to do things the right way. Was it fun to see that group kind of come together in that way as that first season went on? Yeah, it was, you know, and uh, you mentioned uh, Tugger, Ron Tugnut was outstanding. You have to have great goalkeeping. And, uh, you know, if you look at, look at our last five games, uh, we won three of our last five games and uh, we won two, one, two, one, and four, one uh, were the three wins. So, Every one of those games was solid, solid goaltending. So Tugger was great. Um, we did block a lot of shots. We did all the little things that make a big difference, you know, and there was no exceptions to the rule. Uh, you know, the Jamie pushers, the uh, Lyle Oda lines, guys like that uh, really pushed everybody to buy in and uh, to do all those things. And, uh, you know, I wrote a book called Ice Bags and Loose Pucks, and it really reflects the season with the Blue Jackets in many ways because – uh, you know, we had to get to loose pucks because it made a big difference and we had to block a lot of shots, take a lot of hits. So ice bags were appropriate. So, uh, you know, when I wrote that book, I kind of reflected back to my time with the Blue Jackets and those little things make a big difference. Yeah, and as you, you've mentioned so many of the names around that first team uh, and their names that I think Blue Jackets fans remember very fondly. Uh, are they names you remember fondly as well? Was it for you a fun group of guys to be around? Because you were right, there was some pretty good talent on that team and there were some players who had obviously been in the NHL for a long time. And it was maybe a little bit of a different league too, where there was more older guys than there are now these days. Uh, but, you know, there were some pretty good names on that original roster and some pretty, uh, some guys that fans really enjoyed rooting for. Well, you look at, you know, Jeff Sanderson. Jeff Sanderson was a heck of an NHL player and he was our, our gifted top offensive guy and uh, scored so many important goals for us. Lyle Odeline was our captain and he was a grisly old veteran of the NHL at, uh, you know, could tell guys, this is how you got to play if you want to play in the league and uh, Jamie Pusher. And then you can't overlook a guy like Kevin Deneen. Um, he comes from a great hockey family and uh, he provided us with great leadership and, and uh, character. So, you know, we really evolved as a team. We became a team hard to play against. And, uh, you know, I just think when you look at that group, um, you know, Espen Knutson from Europe, David Viborny, first timers from Europe, never played in the NHL before. And they were in their 30s, becoming rookies in the NHL. And they did a wonderful job for us. So uh, it was just lots of fun. I can remember coaching with Newell Brown and uh, Gerard Gallant. And they were just a great group of guys to be associated with. And uh, even this, though the season was a long, hard season for us, um, it still was lots of fun from day one to the end. Yeah. Was it also fun? Obviously, you know, you weren't the general manager. That was Doug McLean. So you weren't necessarily maybe – involved in much as putting the team together, but was it fun to kind of see when you were getting uh, some of these players involved that, that you're going to have a chance to coach some really good pros and some guys that, that you probably would have wanted to coach just because of the kind of the reputations that they'd had around the league. So was it fun to just maybe see that team come together, I guess, at the start as you were, you know, finding names to kind of be part of that team. Yeah, we were making, you know, we were making progress with our, our group and we knew that, uh, you know, we had solidified a, a pretty competitive franchise after the first year. And, uh, you know, everybody was hopeful that, uh, you know, we were going to get this franchise off on a good start. And uh, the fan interest was high. Uh, we were really well received. And, you know, with the uh, Ohio State and the Buckeyes there, uh, you know, you got that's pretty good uh, competition for you. But uh, it was a friendly one. And uh, 
So really, we were all very proud of the fact that the franchise got off to a real good start. And uh, there's just so many people that did such a great job. Our staff, people like Todd Chirac, you know, and uh, people like that uh, were just terrific. Everybody worked so hard. The uh, sacrifices people made uh, were amazing, uh, both on the ice and off the ice. Everybody was, was on the same page. Yeah, and that's what it takes to get a team like that off the ground. And uh, you mentioned kind of the fans there as well. Uh, what do you just kind of remember about the excitement level and the fan base when they got there? You kind of mentioned that first game, uh, the excitement that came with that, but it, it wasn't just that first game. It was something that lasted not even just the first year. It even went into the second, third years uh, and it continues to this day. Yeah, the, the, it was, the reception was great. I, I was really impressed with, uh, with how the fans um, kind of knew what to expect. You know, they knew we weren't going to win every game but they knew that uh, they hoped we were going to compete every game. And we tried to do that. We tried to provide the team with, uh, or the fans with entertainment through our effort, uh, not always our skill. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, Jeff, you know, blocking shots, all those little things uh, really impressed people. You could see the guys really wanted to win. It was going to be a challenge, but they were going to give it everything they had. And so um, it was a great marriage between great fans and a, and a great group of players. Uh, and, uh, as I said earlier, you know, it started off the franchise in a fine footing. And it's interesting, too, because the, the other franchise that was an expansion team was Minnesota. Yeah. And they were brought into the league the same time we were. So they were our benchmark all year long in the dressing room. You could tell guys when we got against Minnesota, said, guys, this is our benchmark right here. They're an expansion team just like us. We got to win this game. And we did finish with more points than uh, – Minnesota. So that always made us feel like uh, our, num our, our equal uh, op opponent being a, an expansion team, right. we did finish ahead of them in terms of points, which was good. Yeah, that, it certainly was. And, you know, that was such a, a great first year with so many memories. You coached so many different places in your career and, and got to spend two and a half years in Columbus. Uh, as you look back at that time, what maybe stands out about Columbus as a hockey market, just having had the chance to be so many places. As you look back, what makes Columbus maybe unique among the places that you've been in your career? Well, Columbus was very special because uh, it was new. And of course, I had coached in Montreal with the Canadians who I think hold the record for a number of Stanley Cups by any franchise in the league. And the rich tradition there and is really amazing. I coached in Calgary with the Flames, which was a previous Stanley Cup uh, winner a couple of years before I went there. So they were really established franchises. So when you come to Columbus, the, not, the thing that really stood out to me always, Jeff, was the enthusiasm of everybody. Like our fans were, even after a tough game, you know, they were so appreciative of uh, the guys and giving us and giving an effort. Uh, our staff, as I said, was so committed. Um, it just was enthusiasm was always there from day one to the last game of the season. And uh, I think uh, that's the one thing you get with an expansion franchise. You get a very unique opportunity to uh, work with people, to uh, start a franchise and get fans to buy in. And uh, it worked out so well. Yeah, and I've mentioned a couple of times here, obviously, all the different places you've been. Just what was it like to kind of be able to spend a life in hockey and just have so many different experiences, not just Columbus, but all the different places that you had a chance to coach around the world? Uh, I'm sure you had a lot of fun and a lot of memories uh, over the years. Yeah, I've been lucky to coach. For, I coached for over 40 years, and I coached, you know, college hockey to start with, and my major junior college. And then I was spent nine years in our national team, Olympic programs uh, here in Canada, and then came into the NHL. And then after that, I went to... Uh, Gosh, I went to Russia, Sweden, Germany, Japan. Uh, I just really wanted my coaching career. And my wife, Linda, wanted that as well, to be as interesting uh, as we could make it. Because, uh, you know, there's just so many great opportunities out there. So being able to coach in all those different hockey cultures was very interesting for me. Uh, it gave me a, an appreciation for uh, how the game is different from country to country, how your culture affects the, how you play the game of hockey. And uh, so it was a wonderful experience, Jeff. And uh, uh, I look back at my career and I have no regrets. It was just lots and lots of fun. And uh, coaching truly is a great profession. That it is. And, and that was actually one thing I was going to ask is, is you did go different places. Did you find with the cultures that you went into that you had to change the way that you coached in certain places? Or was at the end of the day, once the pucks are on the ice, is hockey pretty much just hockey? No, it's not. You have to change. You have to adapt. You know, I can remember coaching in Russia and... Uh, just little things, Jeff, like to get them to shoot the puck was difficult because they always wanted to pass and always make a pretty goal. Uh, a, a regular ugly goal to them wasn't great. They had to make it look really pretty. 
So like, there, so those kind of challenges come up for you. Uh, they're very collective and they, that, by being that, it's, it makes you difficult to defend against. But at the end, somebody has to shoot the puck and put it in the net. And just little things like that. I remember in Japan, uh, the Kohai Sampai, you know, I remember watching line rushes in Japan and after about five or six minutes, Jeff, it struck me that the same guy always shot the puck. So I asked my translator, what, why is the same guy always shooting the puck? Oh, well, the answer was simple. He's the oldest guy on the line and he has to shoot the puck. So, you know, Jeff, all those things just make it so much more interesting and you have to adapt. If you're going to coach in those cultures, yes, there's a game of hockey, but you have to always be aware that the cultural differences uh, have to be uh, breached as much as the, as the hockey part. That is true. And so kind of fascinating to hear about that. And obviously, uh, for those of us here in Columbus, we appreciated the time that you spent with us and there's so many great memories. And so I appreciate you uh, taking some time today to kind of go back over them and, and talk about the early days of the Blue Jackets. Jeff, it's a real pleasure. And uh, say hello to all those great fans in Columbus and uh, good luck next year to the Blue Jackets. you got a great coach, John Tortorella's amazing coach. And uh, I hope the Blue ja uh, the I hope the uh, Buckeyes get into the Final Four and they can win it this year. It'd be great. Well, it looks like you're even kind of got Scarlet and Gray on there, so you kind of look like you fit right <laughs> in here in Columbus. <laughs> go Buckeyes! That's right. Go Buckeyes and go Blue Jackets! And heck, the Columbus Crew just won a championship as well. So it's a it's yes. a great place here uh, in Columbus to have a, a sports franchise, and you were a big part of the beginning of, of one of them. So we appreciate the time and appreciate all those memories. Thanks very much, Jeff. I right, thank you.